I'm Mrs. Voris. I teach health for the 7th and 8th graders here at Salina Middle School. And the presentation that you're going to have today is our vape presentation by our DARE officer, Deputy Geis, who does an amazing job here at school helping students to be able to handle the outside pressures of school. Um, we do this presentation for all of our 8th graders. They will have it as their part of their DARE program that they have here at CMS. The first question I have for you guys is, how did the modern vaping trend start? Does anybody know? Ms. Forrest. I think that it started because it was sold as an alternative to smoking, and it was the safe thing to do. OK. Uh, do you know when it started, though? Five years ago. Five years ago. All right, that's a good guess. Who else wants to take a guess? Good. 15 years ago. All right. Closer. 14. 14. Very close. So the modern vaping started in 2003 by a Chinese named Han Like. So Han Like was, uh, saw his dad go through some heavy smoking and develop some uh, lung problems. He actually died of lung cancer. So Han Like created the modern vaping device, the ones that you see today, to help uh, reduce that, to help reduce the way that chemicals go into the body so you don't die from cigarettes. So vaping actually started back in the, uh, the late 1700s, which we can go into a little bit more about it later. But Han, he, was, uh, he created this, and it was originally made for people to get less nicotine. So with how easy it is, most users will get actually more nicotine to satisfy addiction. And like, <clears throat> instead of uh, quitting, he now smokes cigarettes and vapes. So why is vaping and e-cigarettes becoming more popular, especially with youth? OK, you don't have to buy a bunch of cigarettes. That's a good answer. Some people might uh, make it think it makes you look cool. Popularity, yes, that's another good answer. What else? Think they're better for you. Oh, people uh, think they're better for you. Yes. Takes away stress. Takes away stress. So it's thought to be a healthier way uh, of smoking. It's possibly used to quit smoking. There's no odor, or it's a less harsh odor, which makes it more uh, concealable. Has flavoring in it. Some people like it for the flavor. So. Between what ages is average for vape users? 20. 20? Okay, that's fairly close. 13 to 30. 13 to 30. Quite a, a wide range, but you're in the right ballpark. 22. 22? Okay. Anybody else? 18. 18. Very close. So between ages 15 and 19. This is the age of the average vape user. This is because they have flavors appealing to kids and teens. Social media advertisement. You got a lot of advertisement on social media, and people are uh, your age or more on social media than the older folks. Sponsoring music festivals and events. And some companies have even offered scholarships. So why is this age so young? Because you're a teenager? OK. What else? Because kids have a lot of stress. Because kids have a lot of stress? I'll agree with that, too. Any other guesses? We went over a few on the last slide. So you don't think it's that bad for you? Some people don't think it's that bad for you? as in it's a healthier way of, uh, of smoking. OK, I'll also agree with that. So it's curiosity. I want to see what it's like. See somebody else doing it, see somebody older doing it. It's like, yeah, sure, I want to be like them. Why not try? Uh, they can get away with it easier than smoking. Like I said, it's more concealable. There's not much of an odor or there's no odor at all because they like the taste. A lot of these uh, vapes and e-cigarettes have flavorings in them. They like the taste because of that. 
As a social activity, sometimes adults will get together and uh, drink beer. Sometimes people will get together and uh, vape to relax. Talked about that, and we'll talk about uh, that a little bit later, the chemical to feel good or get high, and stuff of that nature. So why is nicotine addictive? Because once you do it, you can't stop. OK. That's a good answer. What else? It's a certain chemical that makes you just want to do it over and over. It is a certain chemical that makes you want to do it over and over. Does anybody know what that chemical is called? The chemical he's talking about is called dopamine. So this is the feel-good hormone. This is a hormone in your body. Everybody has dopamine. And when you do something that makes you feel good, that dopamine releases into your brain. Makes you feel great. This tricks in your brain to thinking your body needs this. Now, there are some things to where, you know, dopamine can, when it's released, is a good thing. But nicotine is what releases that dopamine, and nicotine is bad for the body. So this is the start of a drug purge bing cycle. So what I'm going to have here is a graph. You got a red line. Right here, your center line. This is your normal. This is how you normally feel. This is how you feel from day to day. You got your high, which is feel great, feel fantastic. This is awesome. Then you have your low, which is your depressive state. So we're going to use cigarettes uh, as an example because it has nicotine in it. But let's say you're at your normal line and you decide to take, you know, three cigarettes or whatever. Dopamine releases in your body and it's like, man, this feels pretty good. So you got the blue line and as soon as you take uh, a hit of those three cigarettes or whatever, you start to feel pretty good. Your body's thinking, wow, this feels awesome. So as you stop, that dopamine starts to decrease and go back, uh, secrete through the body, and you start going uh, below the normal line there. Take three more hits, go up. Uh, you're not quite as high as you were before. Start coming off, go a little bit below the normal line. So you're like, all right, this might be a bad thing. Maybe I should stop. So you stop taking uh, cigarettes altogether, and you start to come back to your normal level, but not nearly as fast as you were when you were on cigarettes. So it's like, all right, I'm going to need to take another hit. So you take another hit, and you go back up to that high because you took four cigarettes this time. So you're up there, and it's like, man, this feels good. This is where I was before. This is where I want to stay. And as you stop, you start coming down again. Take four more, guess what? Again, you're not quite as high to that high, to that feel-good state you were before. Start dropping some more, so you take another hit. And now, as you're taking those hits of the four cigarettes, you're in your normal line. Your body uh, starts thinking, okay, this is what I need to be at this normal state. But you even, you go, down even further. So you take five this time. You go up to that high that you had before, that feel good of how you uh, were before. And so you come down, you come down even harder. So you take five again, and you go up, but you're not quite up there again. You can kind of see the pattern here. You crash even harder. So you take six, you go up, and you're not even near where you were before. And your body is going through what's called withdrawals at this time. So how much nicotine is in a Juul pod? Everybody knows what Juul is, right? How much nicotine, how much more nicotine, how many times more nicotine is in a Juul pod than a pack of cigarettes? 50. 50, not quite 50 times, a little less than 50 times. 14, it's a little less than 14. Three. Jewel pods contain about three times more nicotine than a pack of cigarettes. So what can nicotine do to a young person's brain? Developing. Stop it from developing. So what age does a human brain mature? Now you can still learn stuff after this age. I'm still learning stuff. 
but what age is the human brain matured? Yes. 15, close. It's a little higher. Higher than 10. 25 for females. What do you think it is for males? It's 27 for males. So nicotine or the addiction will prevent or slow down the brain's development. And this can cause things like reduced impulse control, depression, and anxiety. This is also can cause addiction. So mechanical dangers, so vapes and e-cigarettes are mechanical, correct? They heat up a liquid to beyond boiling point to create that vapor so you can breathe in. Does anybody know what temperature water boils at? Well, 100 degrees Celsius. Do you know what that is in Fahrenheit? That's 212 degrees. 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, Celsius, sorry. So if something's designed or not designed correct enough to get up to temperature that hot, it can fail, right? So a few years ago, there was a boy that started vaping. He was in his room when his mom heard loud screams. So he was up in his room vaping, and his mom's like, well, at least he's vaping and not smoking. She thought it was an alternative way to uh, smoke and be healthier. Well, as she was cooking dinner downstairs, she heard horrific screams coming up from his room. Went up there, check on him, found out that the vape device had blown up as he was taking a hit. The boy had to get extensive surgery on his jaw and mouth because it blew up right there. That's his x-ray. So what are some common chemicals found in vape liquids? Most of these cigarettes and vaping products are not FDA approved. So these guys go around to companies and, you know, people who make food and snacks and stuff like that, and they deem the products and the ingredients that they put in there safe. If they're not safe, they'll tag them and stuff like that and try to get them to uh, change some of the ingredients so it's healthier. So there is one product as of October 2021 that is FDA approved for vapes. Now of all the companies out there, there's only one product so far that has been FDA approved. This is the BATs or the British American Tobacco's uh, Vus Solo. So this has been designed to deliver less nicotine to the person and uh, is safer than actual cigarette smoking. So just because it's not FDA approved doesn't mean they can't sell on the market and it means that they can put whatever they want into the product. Because it's not FDA approved, you don't have somebody overlooking and they can put whatever they want for the chemical wise. So the first chemical that are found in some vaping liquid is propylene, propylene glycol. Does anybody know what that is? I don't expect you guys to, but just out of curiosity. So has anybody ever been to a rock concert? See the heavy smoke effect? And everything. This is used in that theatrical fog. What about lead? Anybody know what lead is? It's what used to be used in pencils. Now they use graphite. But lead is a metal. It is highly toxic. <clears throat> this is used in car batteries and it used to be used in paint. When you get old enough to buy a house, you will have to sign a paper saying that you were warned about possible lead-based paint because it can cause sickness and illness. Atalahide. Atalahide is a carcinogen found in cigarette smoke. Formaldehyde. Anybody know what formaldehyde is? So when somebody passes, and they decide to have a viewing, they put formaldehyde into the body to preserve the body so it doesn't start decaying during the, uh, during the viewing. This is another chemical that is found in some vaping liquids. Toline. Toline is a common ingredient found in paint thinner. What about comidium? Comidium is used in consumer batteries such as 
triple A's, double A's, and nine volts. What about acetone? Is that, isn't that an acid? It is an acid. Girls, hold up your hands. Let me see your fingers. You probably know what acetone is. You probably know what acetone is. What's acetone? Nail polish remover. Acrylin. This is used as a herbicide to kill weeds and algae. Nickel. This is also a metal. This is commonly found in batteries, magnets. Glycerin. So glycerin is a syrup found in some foods. Now the FDA has deemed this safe to eat. They do not know the nature or the dangers of inhaling it. Liquid nicotine. Should be an easy one. It, uh, that's nicotine in liquid form. Diacetyl. So diacetyl is a chemical used for butter flavor. Now, like glycerin, the FDA has deemed this safe to eat. However, it's not safe to inhale. This chemical is used for vape flavorings in some companies. So to speak a little bit more about diacetyl. Around 2006, there was a microwave popcorn manufacturer that was using this chemical for butter flavoring. Now, again, it is safe to eat. Employees starting to get sick from a condition called bronchiitis obliterans. This is more commonly known as popcorn lung. Has anybody ever heard of popcorn lung? So popcorn lung is the scarring of tiny air sacs in the lungs, causing the airways to thicken and narrow. This is irreversible. This is not like where cigarettes, you get tar built up in your lungs, you stop smoking for a while, it starts to go away. This is irreversible. This is what an air sac uh, or passive way inside your lungs looks like for a normal person. Then popcorn lungs with that scarring, it gets thicker and narrow, which makes it harder to breathe. So another thing that they're uh, finding out is something called evali. Evali is e-cigarettes and vaping associated lung illness. This is still fairly, fairly new. So it's a new group of symptoms that can cause from vaping or e-cigarettes use. Symptoms can include cough, shortness of breath, chest pain, nausea, and upset stomach. And they're still not sure, if, uh, we don't know quite why this is caused. Some people are uh, thinking that it's some of the crystal, some of the liquid crystallizing inside the lung, causing it harder to breathe, causing lung illness, and stuff like that. So in conclusion, the state of Ohio, it is illegal for any persons under the age of 21 to buy and to use vape pens, cigarettes, and any other nicotine or THC-based product. If you were caught in school with a vape or a cigarette, the principal can either press charges, he can suspend you, he can do stuff like that. If you're caught outside, you can be criminally uh, processed. Everybody's heard of secondhand smoke, right? So now they're, <clears throat> excuse me, talking about a thing, uh, secondhand vapor is a thing, but they're also talking about uh, thirdhand vapor. A thirdhand vapor is the chemical and the smoke or the vapor is getting caught on clothing and stuff like that. Then when you irritate the clothing, like if it gets caught on the couch, you sit down on the couch, it gets released back in the air and you can get some of the chemicals in. Now it's not nearly as much as like, you know, secondhand smoke, but it's still being researched and still there.